everyone, welcome back to Vlogmas and welcome back to my Christmas corner of the internet. We had a frost last night and the temperatures went down to about minus four, I think. The sun's just coming up, um, it's just going to come through the trees and then it'll just skirt the tops of the trees there and uh, then it'll go behind those trees and we won't see it again till tomorrow. So we get the sun here till about two o'clock, I think, when it's out. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of dew frost on the grass this morning, so yeah, it's very cold. Just to have you with the view, shall we? I'm just going to go down to the chickens and uh, we're going to have a different vlog today. I'm looking very, very tired today because I am. I didn't go to bed till about one o'clock this morning because uh, I was getting cards ready for delivering from the church. We're going round in the local town and we're going to put 500, uh, 750 Christmas cards through all the letter boxes in the town. And uh, in the valley there's about three and a half thousand people, I think, something like that. And in this area, so we're going to do 750 of them. <laughs> but I sat folding and writing on the envelopes and putting the cards in the envelopes last night and I did 300. My husband helped me with about 100 of them and then I finished them off before I went to bed because I wanted to get them done. So yeah, today we're going to have a different vlog. What I thought I'd do today is I thought I'd show you me plying the yarn um, and skeining it off and then I thought we'd go in the workshop and get on with a couple of jobs in there. I want to make sure I get my podcast, my, vlog, my vlogs out because I haven't got yesterday's out and I didn't get any spinning done in yesterday's vlog because of doing the cards. But uh, we're just going to go to the hens, go and say good morning to them, give them their breakfast, check they're okay after the frost last night and uh, go in the kitchen and ply our yarn and light the fire. So let's go up and see the chickens. Look at my eucalyptus tree. I can use that for dyeing wool, but it's got loads of new shoots on it. I nearly binned it as well. So yeah, we can dye some wool with that next year. Right, those lovely fat buds as well on my camellia. They're the flowers for next spring. People in YouTube want to say hello. Good morning, are you hungry? Daisy's feathers are coming back nicely. I didn't realise. She must have been nice and warm last night and her feathers have all come out. So that's good. Daisy, uh, Pippa's being bossy. She must be hungry. Are you hungry, Pippa? There you go. You look very nice today, Daisy. Stop being bossy, Pippa. Stop telling everybody off. Right, this is what we did last night for them. I put bubble wrap all over it. Look at the state of that water runner, it's disgusting. Right, they've had their breakfast now. Pippa's having a drink of water. No eggs, so we'll leave them to it. Bye Grace, time to go in. Let's go and get on with some spinning and get the fire lit. Now they're all sorted out. Let's go back down to the house and uh, we'll get sorted in our day. It's absolutely freezing out there. I uh, put my fingerless gloves on. These on. And my fingers are frozen. They're tingling. They're that cold. And I've only been chopping kindling for the fire. I'm going to put that on in a minute. My fire. And uh, we're going to do some plying on that yarn. I'll just show you that mountain of cards I did last night. I can't believe I did all, all of them and got 300 of them done. There's that pile there. And there's that pile there. And that's what I did last night. My husband helped me with this pile here. And uh, did all the rest. Hence looking extremely tired today. So... As I said, we're going to do the yarn and then we're going to put the fire on and I think then we're going to go out in my workshop and do a couple of jobs out there and uh, I'll show you my, my wreath that I did with my yarn as well. 
So a different day today. When I have my coffee break later, I'll do a bit of a book review for you, for you as well. So we're going to have a bit of a mixed up day today. Yeah, I'm just going to light the fire and uh, be back in a minute. So see you in a minute. Right, we're back in the house and we've got a lovely bright day today. So it's a perfect day for doing what we're going to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this. Yeah, we're going to apply it with some sparkle and we're going to apply it with some mohair. So I've got my Nizzy Nozzy out as well and I'm going to show you that. What we're going to apply it with is this. I've got no use for it. It doesn't look like it's a full mohair. Um, it's got little bits of white, little bits of pink. It looks a bit Christmassy. There's 39 grams on it, so we'll see how we get on. Because there's roughly, oh, let's have a think. About 60, 70 grams on there, maybe more, of wool. So, yeah, I need to find the end. And once I've found the end, we can get going. So what we're going to do is, we're going to do this and then we're going to go out in the workshop when my husband's back and um, we're going to go and have a play in the workshop and then later on I'm going to spin both of day 7 and day 8 and I'll pop that in at the end for you so you won't miss out on the other two days I just simply have not had the time to sit at my spinning wheel because we were out last night at a Bible study prayer meeting and then we didn't get back until about ten past nine I think and then I did all those cards so by the time I finished that it was one o'clock in the morning so I just went to bed but uh, it'll still be there today so you we're still going to have our advent spin, just not on the day that we we we, we looked at it. So, right, I'm just going to get my sparkle, set my wheel up, and then I'll show you how I do the, the plying. Right, I put my bobbin on the lazy case on the table just there. I've got my sparkle, this one. It's a multicoloured one. I've got two two lots of it. I might have enough in this one. We'll have to see. And I've got my mohair. I've got my empty bobbin on, there we go, the empty bobbin is on, there we go, there is still something on here but that doesn't really matter, thread it through and then we're going to take our ends and we're just going to tie them on, that's why I always leave that sort of that much just so we can get going with the yarn, okay? So, oh, I forgot to tie in my sparkly bit. Right, we forgot to tie that in, so we'll just tie that on as well. There we go. Now then, this silver one, this silver one here, I'm not going to hold on to. I'm just going to let it do its thing. But I've got my ply thread here, and I've got my yarn here. So, I have plied this in two, I have spun this in two different directions, so I'm just hoping that it's not going to unravel as I spin it. But we'll have to see how we get on. I can always undo it and start again. So let's start the wheel. And as you can see, I'm just letting the this one do what it wants. So that can just ply however it wants. Maybe put it on a little bit. <laughs> now when you get to a lock, loosen it off a bit. Let's carry on. And that way your locks stay nice and loose. A bit of funky stuff going on. Right, here's our bell. Let's do that nice and tight. I love the noise the bells make when they go in. Oh, we come to another lock. 
So let's loosen that out a bit. Right, so let's have a look at the bobbin. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, that's what we've got so far. So I'll carry on and then I'll show you a bit more in a minute once I get about halfway. Right, this is what we've got so far on our bobbin. We're not even halfway through. But uh, as you can see, all the sequins and things like that coming through in the yarn. So I'm really pleased with how it's turning out. This silver thread's not as easy to use as I thought it would be. But uh, I'm going to carry on with it because I like the effect. But it keeps getting tangled up in with the mohair. But we're going to carry on because I want it consistent. I know it's an art yarn but I still want a bit of consistency with it for when I come to weave with it. So. Blend that back in. I'm not liking this uh, mohair at all. I don't like it. So I've decided now that I'm just going to coil spin it round the mohair and just use it as a core thread rather than something that can be in the yarn because I don't like the colour. I have got some nicer mohair, but I just want to get this done so I can get on with the rest. But uh, seems to be turning out okay. I think I need my coffee. I haven't had a coffee yet. That might help things along. I like this pink. I'm even tangled up in my seat pad with this mohair. It's awful stuff. It's not a fast process, it's quite slow. I'm about halfway, I think. But I'm loving this pink colour, this amazing colour. Look at that. Right, I'm going to carry on with this and get my cup of coffee. I'll get it finished and then I'll come back and I'll show you. Uh, taking it off on the nitty noddy and making it into a skein so that'll be fun and then we can see the finished yarn together but I think this is going to turn out really really well so I'm going to go now and I'll be back in a bit so I'll see you soon right so this is our plied yarn all nice and off the nitty noddy I did think that I'd recorded me taking it off the bobbin but unfortunately I didn't switch the camera on so I could I haven't shown you taking it off on the niddy noddy which I wanted to do but I'll show you that with the next one when we come to the next bobbin but uh, yeah as you can see it's really funky really fun and uh, this is our first bobbin so I'm really 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 pleased with it really pleased with it um, I'm loving the textures that I've got. Um, I like the overspun with the silver. It looks really good. We've got beads in there. We've got bells in there. It's just a really, really fun yarn. There's some bells. Some beads, some bells. So yeah, I'm really, 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 really pleased with it. I'm loving this pink here, overspun with the silver, the locks. So yeah, I'm really pleased with the first one. So this is our first skein. Unfortunately, as I say, I did film, I thought I'd filmed taking it off on the nitty noddy, but I didn't. I just sat there talking to the camera. So sorry about that. But there you go. There's our first yarn. So I hope you like it. Um, I'm going to go in the workshop now and go and do some work on my wreath. 
So uh, I'll show you that as well. But uh, it's time for a coffee break now. So there you go. There's our yarn. Hope you've enjoyed that. Right, it's time for my coffee break now. So I thought I would show you the book that I've got for you today. It's a book I bought a while ago and it's a lovely little book. Well, it's not a little book, it's a big book. But anyway, I'm having my coffee break and I thought that I'd show you the book that I've got for you today. So I'll just turn you around and you can have a look, just a sec. So this is our book for today. It's called The Fleece and Fibre Source Book. And it's more than 200 fibres from around, from animal and spun yarn. And it's a great book. It's a fabulous book. I highly recommend it. It's quite expensive. It's about £25. But uh, it talks about everything. It talks about the fibre, how to scour it. Um, talks about the tools and equipment you're going to need. The terms you'll need to know, like carding and um, the wool, the bat. <coughs> Different terms. The loft, whether it's long wool, short wool. Um, sheep. And then it's got all about the different breeds in it. It's a breed study book of all the different breeds. It has a starter guide to specific breed wools. And then the reason it's such a fabulous book is it's got so many different breeds in it. And then it tells you like the weight of the fibre that comes in, the, in, in a whole fleece off the sheep. This is, this is um, a Derbyshire grit stone. And it'll tell you the weight of the fleece that comes off a particular sheep. It'll tell you the tape, staple length of the fibre, so that's the length of the hair itself. Um, then it'll tell you the diameter of the fibre, so the thickness of the actual hair itself. Um, each individual strand of hair, like your, your own hair on your head. It'll tell you the individual, individual fibre thickness. It'll tell you about the lock characteristics, whether it's going to be um, a long lock, a short lock, um, whether you're going to be able to lock spin with it, not lock spin with it, um, just everything that you'll need to know about the characteristic of the fibre itself. It'll tell you whether you can dye it, um, tells you uh, tips on preparation, and then what it can be used for knitting and crocheting and weaving, what you can use it for. So it tells you all different breeds. You've got the Scottish Blackface, you've got the Cheviot or Sheviot, I don't know quite how you pronounce it. It's got the pictures then of how it knits up, how it spins up, what it's like washed, what it's like unwashed. Um, where are we? Let's find South Down. That's a nice fibre. I like Portland fibre, it's a beautiful fibre. The Shropshire sheep. Uh, then these are the English long wools, which it goes through Border Leicester. I love I love using that. It's really nice wool. Uh, Leicester long wool. There, that's really nice. Um, what else can we find? Tees water, and then it'll show you a picture of the lock. It shows you a picture of the sheep. It tells you about the breed of sheep, where it's from, some of its history. Um, yeah, it's a really, really good one. This this we get a lot of around here. I use a lot of this fleece. The Balwyn Melsh Mountain. Uh, I can get that quite readily around here. I can get the Badger Face here quite readily. Um, so, yeah, it's a really, really good book. It also talks about uh, unusual breeds as well. Um, this Quiznant, I showed you some fibre in my, um, oh, it was my cupboard, un un uh, unpacking my cupboard uh, to move it when I took all my hands spun out. I had some of this in there. I had the brown um, and I got that off my neighbour. That's an unusual sheep. That's how it looks. Uh, you've got one called a Ramanov. The Shetland, I get quite a bit of that round here. Um, what else have we got? Look at that cute picture with the lambs. So yeah, I highly recommend it. It's a really, really, really good book. A Soe sheep, very rare. 
Um, that was the yarn that I'm going to do my shawl out of at some point. I just showed you in one of my videos. That's this one. That was a St Kilda sheep. So, yeah, that's the sheep that that came from. And again, it tells you the weight of the fleece, which you don't get a lot. Three quarters of a pound to two pound of fleece. So you don't get a lot in that at all, which is why it's so rare. And they shed their own fleece as well, so you'd have to go running around the fields to get it. Unless you particularly uh, shear the sheep, but they are ones that shed their own hair. Clan Wenog, I've got that on my shop. I've got some fleece of that available in my shop, already carded. Um, and that is beautiful. Really nice wool. This is the sheep I show you in my videos. Uh, they ha We have that at the back. The speckled face. The farmer at the back likes them. The Welsh Mountain. Yes, we get. I get an awful lot of that. I think I've spun some of that into this yarn that we've just done. It's actually classed as a conservation breed. And there's masses of them around here. So, yeah, it's a really good book. I do use it. I have looked all the way through it. It is one I have read. The Swarbles Fleece, I've got some of that in the shed. Ryland, I've got that. I mean, that just looks like a teddy bear. Texel, they grow quite readily around here. I've had Blue Texel, which are really nice. So, yeah, there's also some really rare breed, like the Faroese Sheep. Um, look at that one. Look at his funky horns. And then there's other hair as well for, from goats. Talks about dog fur to cashmere goat. Um, it has everything. Also, it talks about llamas, um, alpacas, so camel hair. Look at that camel hair. I've got some of that in the garage. Bison. Now I didn't know you could use theirs. Dogs, cats. The musk ox. Look at that one. Oh, look at him. A yak. <laughs> so, yeah, as you can see, it's a really, really good book. It's called The Fiber, the Fleece and Fiber Source Book. Um, highly recommend it. It's a great book. If you're interested in spinning and you want to try different fibers, you can have a look in this and see what you can do, what you can make with it, and if it's going to be suitable before you start spinning it. That's my coffee break book. Um, I'm going to have my coffee in my nice new mug. There you go, look. My little squirrel knocking under the toadstools. There he is. So yeah, I'm just going to have my coffee and then we'll quickly go out into the garage. And see what's going on out there. I'd like to show you my wreath and show you what how that's done. And then later on I'll do day 7 and day 8. And uh, I'll pop that in the video either for today or tomorrow. So we'll go in the garage in a bit. I'm just going to have my coffee. So see you in a bit. Right, so it's the end of day eight. And I've come out into my little Christmas grotto. I'll probably be doing some vlogs out here because uh, my husband's nearly finished his work now. Um, he's just got a few jobs left before the end of the year. So uh, I've decided to set up a little podcast, a little vlogging area in my workshop and I'll do my spinning out here and my weaving out here and we'll do some making out here as well. So hope you like it. We've got some fairy lights up over here and we've got some lights up behind and there you go, look. And I was hanging my wreath up there as well. Shall I hang it up? You can have a look. Do you want to have a look at the camp? close up look at this this is what I made with uh, that base I was showing you the other day and I popped some bells on the bottom popped a couple of bells here and uh, a ribbon to hang it up so I'm really really pleased with it it looks really effective really enjoyed making it so it's a good use of some hand spun yarn so we'll hang that up there that's going to go on the door don't you think it looks Christmassy I think it looks really really nice um, and the other thing I've been making is this one. Do you remember the other day I showed you this hand spun yarn that I'd found? This one here with all the tinsel and all the lovely colourly bits, coloured bits on. Well I've done this now and uh, I've put some bells on 
I put a thread and a bow on the top and I think I'm going to put a tassel down here as well with a couple of bells on the bottom like I've done on this one here and then when the wind blows or you close the door the bell will jingle like a jingle bells so really pleased with that it's turned out really really well all I've done is just wrapped it around the wreath base and I popped a bow and a hanger on the top and some bells just here so I'm not going to add any more because I want to be able to see my yarn so yeah I'm really pleased with that so that one can get hung up as well I've still got one to do I've still got this one so I'm going to do another one and uh, one for the front door one for the back door and one for the garage so and they'll be out of the rain so they won't get wet but uh, if I get bored I can always take that off and use it for something else because it's uh, 50 centimeters half a meter so so that's that I think for today I've got to go out in a bit I'm going to meet my cousin I haven't seen him for five years and he just happens to be around in the area so I'm going to go and meet my cousin so yeah I haven't seen him for a long time so <coughs> excuse me it'll be nice to go and see him so I'll try and get round to doing the spinning later on but if not it'll be in tomorrow's video I have done the plying um, as you've seen so I'll add that in for you as well and you can see the yarn at the end um, and see what we came up with it turned out really really well I'm really pleased with it um, it's really blingy I'll just get it for you and then you can have a look before we go because I'm really impressed with it just a sec got a lovely jingle there we are there's our yarn so it's turned out really yummy there's some bells at the top there not pink but I'm really pleased with it some locks and it's turned out really funky so I'm really really loving it I don't know what I'm going to weave with it I might try and weave it on my big loom and weave it into a shawl but uh, I'm really impressed with it and I love it so I'm looking forward to doing day seven and day eight today because I didn't get round to it as I said yesterday but um, it's far too tired by one o'clock this morning by the time I've done <coughs> all those Christmas envelopes so yeah there's our funky yarn <laughs> So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed my vlog today. Um, I'm going to go now. We've had a lot to see today, haven't we? And uh, I will see you tomorrow for day nine. And if necessary, we'll have a triple up episode of uh, all my spinning. But uh, I'll try my best to get some done and pop it in at the end of this video for you. Even if I just get day seven done and pop that in at the end of this video for you. And then I'll do day eight tomorrow. So yeah, I'm going to go now before I start waffling and go and meet, have my tea and then meet my cousin. So uh, I will see you tomorrow. So have a lovely evening. Have a crafty evening. I'm really loving this wreath behind me here. I don't think I might leave that in here. <laughs> no, I'll put it on the door. I promise I'll put it on the door. I'll see if I can get another one and make one to leave in here because I've still got some of that yarn left. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go now and uh, I will see you tomorrow for day nine. So have a lovely evening, enjoy all your crafting and uh, bye for now, bye bye.